Russia's losses in Ukraine is estimated at between 462 and 728,000. Russia has not reported the number of its soldiers killed or wounded since it launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022. At the same time, according to The Economist, the level of Russian casualties has already exceeded the number of casualties in all of Russia's wars since World War II. Thus, according to Russian publications Media Zona and Medusa, the death toll in Russia has exceeded 100,000 people and by June the 21st was 106,000 to 140,000 people. Much of their analysis is based on probate records and obituaries on social media and other publications. These figures are broadly consistent with other recent sources. Officials in France recently put the total at 150,000 by May, while BBC Russia estimates that at least 113,000 Russians had died by June. The Economist writes, Moreover, if you distribute this data by week, you can see noticeable jumps in Russian losses during the Ukrainian counter-offensive in the summer of 2023 and after the battles for Avdiivka and Chasivya. At the same time, The Economist writes, these data do not include Ukrainians from the occupied territories as well as Russian soldiers who were seriously wounded and unable to return to battle. Our rough calculations based on leaked US Defense Department documents suggest that for every Russian soldier killed in action, roughly three to four are wounded. That means between 462,000 and 728,000 Russian soldiers were out of action by mid-June, more than the estimated Russian invasion force of February 2022, the article says. This is supported by information from French and British officials who estimate that about 500,000 Russians were seriously wounded or killed as of early May. As The Economist notes, the greatest losses are among people aged 35 to 39, with an estimated 27,000 of this group killed between February 2022 and June 2024. However, as a percentage of Russia's male population, the heaviest losses were among those aged 45 to 49. According to the latest estimates, about 2% of all Russian men aged 20 to 50 have been killed or seriously wounded in Ukraine since the start of the full-scale war. Russia's losses in Ukraine since 2022 exceed the number of victims of all its wars since World War II combined, the publication writes. According to Ukrainian expert Taras Zovtenko, Russia's losses in Ukraine at the current level are unlikely to convince the Russian military leadership to stop military operations. According to him, if the level of Russian casualties per day increases from 1,000 to 3,000 and is maintained at this level for three months, this could create tension in the Russian power vertical. Mass protests began in France. There was a clash between protesters and law enforcement officers. Residents of the capital took to one of the main streets of the city, raising large handwritten banners reading, France is the fabric of migration, and chanting numerous slogans. As the final polls closed in the most momentous election in recent memory, hundreds of people milled about, waiting to find out what would lie in store for France. In a shock win, Final results left the broad left-wing alliance as the biggest force in the French parliament, with the new Popular Front taking 182 seats. Emmanuel Macron's centrist grouping, Ensemble, was in second place, with 163 seats, a stronger showing than expected. Marine Le Pen's far-right, anti-immigration national rally came third with 143 seats. Voter turnout in the first round was high, nearly 68%, compared with 47.5% in the 2022 parliamentary elections. Riots, clashes, and looting broke out across France as left-wing supporters flooded the streets to celebrate the new Popular Front coalition's victory over the right-wing national rally and President Emmanuel Macron centrists. Over 30,000 riot police officers, including 5,000 in Paris alone, were deployed across France to prevent violence as political tensions rose ahead of the election showdown between the right and left. Police desperately tried to disperse the crowd with tear gas as a hooded and masked mob started throwing bottles, erecting barricades, and setting bikes on fire. At least one officer was reportedly injured by a Molotov cocktail. Multiple fire brigades were deployed to extinguish the fires set by rioters. The mood is quite high drama and intense, said Philippe Marlier, professor of French and European politics at University College London. 
It is a mood of mobilization on the part of all those who don't want national rally to get a majority or even win the election.